Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> uh, welcome to the third Sunday after Epiphany. Pastor John, apparently, is not here today. <laughs> it's rather obvious. Um, he went in, he started a new regimen for, um, for therapy, and because of his reaction that he had previously, they decided to, his doctors decided to admit him. So he's, I don't know if he's still there, but he was in the hospital so that they could monitor him through this pill that he's taking to make sure he's okay. So, <laughs> you have a new pastor today, ha ha. <laughs> Um, so bear with me. I will do the best I can. The, let's see, where, where am I at here? I'm ad-libbing and this is bad. Um, I hope that you will take time to review all the announcements at the end of the bulletin. There are quite a few of them and I am not going to read them all. I think you're all capable of reading, so I'm not going to do that. Are there any, however, that you know of that should have been in and for some reason or other didn't make it to the bulletin? Are there any additions? Yes. Not at the very list, but an announcement. Oh. Uh, just again, it didn't make it into the bulletin, but February 26th is the last day of the boxes in the North Texas Prison Texas. Okay, did everybody hear that? February 26th is the last day for boxes and donations in the Narthex to go down to David, Kentucky. Correct? Okay. Okay. Um, there, then we will begin our service, and I invite you to stand as you are able for the ringing of the bell. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Thanks be to God. God, our light and our salvation, Jesus announced the nearness of your kingdom and called his disciples to be fishers of women and men. Give us courage to follow in the way of Jesus that our lives may bear witness to the good news of the kingdom at hand, and our vocation serve to draw people to your salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, we'll sing hymn number 89 in the green hymnal.
Oh, please be seated. <laughs> uh, we'll affirm our faith together by saying the Apostles' Creed in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Instead of a children's message, we'll have the children and teachers gather now to go directly downstairs for Sunday school. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just not doing that. We'll continue in the bulletin with the gathering of our offerings. God, the source of all good things, has given us what we need. In joyful response, let us offer our gifts, the fruit of our labors, and the dedication of our hearts for loving service in the name of Christ.
us pray for God's blessing on all our offerings. God of our salvation, salvation. Receive, receive these gifts we, we offer and bless, and bless them, them for the, the work, work of your kingdom. kingdom. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Please be seated. The first scripture reading is from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 18. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are arguments among you, my brothers and sisters, what I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with elegant wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of his power. For the message above that cross, the cross, is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The Gospel reading is from Matthew, chapter 4, verses 12 through 23. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. Jesus left Nazareth and made his home in Carpinium by the sea in the territory of Zebulon and the valley, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulon, land in the valley, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As Jesus went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. This is the word of God for the people of God. This message is based on a sermon provided through the Elka Synod written by our friend, Reverend Elizabeth Haynes who served as Huff's Church as a seminary student about 20 years ago. Doesn't seem that long, but that's what it says here. Ah, <laughs> oh, the telephone. I don't know how we would get along without it. It is so important to us in our day-to-day -day life. We use it to stay in touch with friends and loved ones. We use it to make appointments. We use it to order pizza. Today's phones are absolutely amazing. Most cell phones will do much more than just make a phone call. Some will let you send text messages and email. Some will even let you take a picture and send it to a friend. One important feature of today's phones is that a friend can call and leave a message. When that happens, your phone lets you know by saying, you have a message, or ding! the annoying ding. You and I have a friend who has left us a message. Jesus is his name, and he has left us a message that he wants us to go fishing with him. Cool. This fishing trip will be quite different, though. Instead of catching fish, 
Jesus has invited us to go fishing for people. Now, Jesus didn't leave his message on the phone, but he left his message in the Bible. One day, as Jesus walked along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon Peter and Andrew, throwing a net into the water because they fished for a living. Jesus called to them, Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. The Bible tells us that they immediately dropped what they were doing and followed Jesus. As Jesus, Peter, and Andrew walked along the shore, they saw two other brothers, James and John, sitting in their boat, mending their nets. They called out and invited them to come along too. They dropped their nets, left their boat behind, and followed Jesus. Just think about it. One minute they were mending their nets and casting them to catch fish, and the next they were on a journey which would totally change their lives and the world. Unbelievable, isn't it? Or didn't you ever have reason to think about it that way? Often, we become complacent about our life and our routines. Sometimes that also happens with our faith life. We worship every Sunday and go through our regular service and can predict what is coming next. The only thing different is who's preaching and about what. We are as guilty about doing our normal routines, but we realize worship is more than that. That's why hearing this gospel can recapture the purpose of the church. The church exists for mission, to take the gospel to the world. That is what is happening in today's gospel. Fishing was a popular trade on the Sea of Galilee and was the most common occupation for people residing in the small villages of Capernaum and Bethsaida, which were located on the lake shore. Living on the shores of Lake Galilee with its abundant supply of fish, people understood fishing perhaps more than they did farming. Jesus reminds the disciples that they were called to become fishers of men or fishers for people. He used the metaphor of fishing because people in a fishing village would understand his meaning, since fishing was a way of life for all of them. They were to catch people for Jesus Christ. The meaning of this story 2,000 years later is that we, contemporary disciples, are to become fishers for men and women and boys and girls. We are to fish for people. We are to catch people for Jesus Christ. That was the first and basic mission of the first disciples and the early church, and also the church 2,000 years later. The Gospels all agree on the first fundamental principles of discipleship. God uses disciples to catch people for Jesus Christ. This is the first thing that Jesus said to his disciples, and this statement about fishing sets the tone for the rest of his ministry. We hear this same thing at the last teaching of Jesus during his ascension. In Matthew 28, verse 19, Jesus said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. We find the same theme in the Gospel of John where the disciples ask their family and friends to come and see Jesus. The two phrases, come and see Jesus and catch people for Jesus, mean essentially the same thing. We Christians are called to be evangelists, fishermen and fisherwomen. We are called to be disciples who say to others, come and see Jesus. You cannot be an effective evangelist unless you have been caught by Jesus Christ. You cannot be an effective evangelist unless you have come and seen Jesus for yourself. 
we need to speak to others out of our personal experience of having been caught by Jesus Christ, of having come and seen the goodness and greatness of the love of God in Jesus. We, the church, may talk about this, but never get around to fishing and inviting people to see and know the presence, power, and person of Jesus Christ. As Christians, we are not automatically evangelists or fishermen or women. It took Jesus one to three years to teach his disciples to become evangelists. We too need to be in the process of becoming fishermen and women for Christ and witness for the gospel and witnesses for the gospel. To follow in the way of Jesus places one's life at risk, for it eventually leads to the cross. To follow through and to follow implies someone is leading. The way God calls us to follow has already been filled with the loving kindness and mercy of Jesus, who has gone before us and who leads us to the foot of the cross. There, in the shadow of the cross, God makes a way for unity in the midst of division, for healing in the midst of brokenness, for peace in the midst of violence, for forgiveness in the midst of betrayal. Around the table, the kingdom of God draws near. Jesus' broken body announces forgiveness, healing, peace, and unity. Many bodies are nourished and formed into the one body of Christ, called and sent to follow in the way of Jesus, to be broken and shed for the sake of the world. If you have ever been fishing, you know what a thrill it is to land a big fish. I landed an eel. <laughs> the, but that was fun. That was fun. It took me almost a half an hour to bring it in. But what an accomplishment. And then after I had it in, it's like, now what? Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine what a thrill it is to go fishing for people and to help someone else come to know Jesus and become one of his followers? Will we return his call? What will our answer be? Dear Jesus, just like Peter, Andrew, James, and John, we want to join you and go fishing for people. Amen. We'll continue in the bulletin with the invitation to prayer. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Please stand as you are able as we sing hymn 448, Amazing Grace.
You may be seated. Let us come together in prayer. Loving God, your light reveals the needs of our world, and your salvation offers hope to the lost. We pray for our world and our community. We pray for your church that all may live in harmony with one another. Fill all pastors, leaders, and teachers of your church with the wisdom and grace of the gospel for the world of the gospel for the world and all for who suffer in oppression and violence grant your faithful servant pastor john and his wife catherine the help of your power so that sickness may be turned into health and they both may be strengthened so they can continue to serve in ministry we name before though you those on our prayer list pastor john and catherine to the family and friends of Nevin Hess who passed away, Eugene Mertz, Pat Moyer, Kathy Mirth, Darlene Goggins, Stephanie Wolfgang, and Karen Flad. And we name now others in need who come to mind either out loud or silently. Grant them your love and comfort taking them into your arms of tender care. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus, our Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join in the responsive reading of the discipleship pledge in your bulletin. We love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We pledge our whole selves to God. We love our neighbors as ourselves. We pledge to do justice as Christ's ambassadors of reconciliation. We love one another as Jesus loves us. We pledge to be and become Christ's beloved community in our life together. We make disciples by teaching and modeling how to follow Jesus' way of love. We pledge to be Jesus' disciples, sharing Jesus' way of love in the way we live our lives and practice our faith. Please stand as you are able for the benediction. May the grace of Christ who calls us go with you. May the power of the Holy Spirit who empowers us sustain you. May the salvation of God who loves us give you peace. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. to God. Please join in singing hymn number 75, only verses 1 through 4. Mm -hmm. 